Welcome back to the channel my friends. Today we're going to be replacing the alternator on this Range Rover L322. This is the 4.2 supercharged. Now this had issues for the past couple months with the alternator. Sometimes it didn't want to start. You could check the voltage on it. With the, without the vehicle running, it should be at 12.6 volts, or at least around 12 volts. With it running, around 14, a little bit over. Um, so this vehicle developed a little bit of a whine at idle. You could hear the alternator whining. Uh, and now it's completely frozen. It won't even let the, let the vehicle turn over. And it did have a little bit of electrical smell when I was running it last but like I said at this point it won't even turn over it looks like something's frozen it could be the idler or something else but I'm thinking it is the alternator so we're going to go ahead and replace that on this first thing we're going to do is remove this engine cover and take a look at the belt maybe possibly we can remove the belt and see if we can turn the idler pulleys and all the other pulleys by hand so I have the vehicle running and the bolt meter connected and you can see it's only putting out about barely 12 volts so that means the vehicle is actually running off of the battery the alternator itself is not charging so that will need to be replaced and to replace that again there is no access to the alternator from up top that will all have to be done from the underneath so we'll remove the splash shield underneath and remove the shield that's underneath in front of the vehicle that should give us some access to the alternator and the belts in the front of the engine I'm not going to go through how to remove this shield if you are looking for help I did a video on how to change the oil on these uh, and I went over on how to remove and replace the shield so I'll leave a link to that in case you need help with that now that we have the top engine cover off we have the shield underneath removed now the alternator on these L322's they sit on the right side of the engine so if you look right through where your coolant bottle is, you can see the alternator right down in there. Uh, now the only way to access that is we will have to remove this headlight. We will have to remove this coolant bottle. You don't have to completely drain it or anything. There is a bracket underneath of it that will have to be removed. That is the only way to remove the alternator from these. You cannot, you may be able to unbolt it from the underneath. But you cannot remove it there's just no room to pull the old alternator out and install the new one so we'll go ahead at this point disconnect the battery that's something uh, you want to do as far as your first step goes so we'll disconnect the battery i have the vehicle in off-road mode so that gives us the access underneath to reach any bolts or the belts that we need to we'll start by removing the grill you got eight millimeter bolts here in the front up top here here and also on the headlight these Phillips screws here we'll go ahead and remove those grill out of the way now on the headlight there's two Phillips screws one here and then one here on the other side and at the bottom there is a 10 millimeter bolt here once you have that removed you should be able to pull the headlight completely out we'll go ahead and disconnect the wiring in the back and completely remove this headlight headlight completely removed Remember, there's only one connection, which is here to the headlight. All you have to do is push that down and pull it from the headlight. And we'll also remove our coolant bottle. There's two 8 millimeter or 10 millimeter bolts actually here on the back of the bottle. And there's a button that catches it on this side in the front. Kind of hard to see. It's a little bit dark. Anyhow, once you have those removed, you should be able to pull it up and out of the way. 8 millimeter bolts holding the coolant reservoir in place. I did remove the return line on this and I capped it off. I put a cap on here and the, and the hose side of it. Just in case we tilt it and it uh, wants to spill. Um, so once you have those bolts off, on, on this side it's just a, just a hook that holds it. You can see that here in a rubber grommet so once you pull that up it will release from there now we have that out of the way now the next thing we need to do is remove this bracket that's in here 
This is where your coolant reservoir bottle sits. The two 8 millimeter bolts are here. Let's get a better look at that hook on the other side. This is the hook that holds the coolant bottle on the other side into the plastic, which is here. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, the next thing we need to do is we need this complete uh, bracket off of there to give us access to the alternator. Now, I did remove the cover on this electrical box uh, in case I need to pull these wiring up to give me the access to remove the alternator. We'll see how that plays out. You might not have to do that, but that's just something I started doing in case I do need that room to get this box a little further back. Anyhow, let's go ahead and remove this uh, this bracket out of the way. I was able to remove this bracket that sits in there just like so onto the frame. Now that's out of the way. Now what's holding it onto the frame, it sits just like this. There's three 8mm bolts. There's one here on the right side of the vehicle. There's one here on the center. And of course the toughest one to get is the one on this side. Um, but it's doable. It's not too bad. Again, you can see the bolt holes. There's one here that's in the center. The one on the right side is here. And the other one sits on the inside of the frame that way. Uh, they are 8 millimeters. So once you have those off, throw that bracket off, now we can kind of see the alternator right in there. We'll see if we can maneuver around these hoses. And it should give us enough room to move that out of there and put the new one in. We will also be removing this intake tube along with the air cleaner. There's a clamp here. There's a clamp here. You can separate it here or you can undo all the Phillips screws on the air filter box all the way around. There's an elect electrical connector here that you squeeze and pull out. There's also a hose here that needs to be disconnected. That's just squeezed and pull out and we'll go ahead and remove this intake tube from the engine so now that we have the intake tube off that will give us access to the belt tensioner it's going to be kind of hard to see i'll try to get the best picture that i can the truck being supercharged actually has two belts still hard to see but obviously you can see the supercharged belt right here, which is ribbed on both sides. There's a secondary belt that's behind it. That's what drives the alternator. So we're not undoing this belt. We are looking to remove the belt from the alternator. Still kind of hard to see. But you can see this shiny piece here. That's my extension going into the tensioner here, which is this right here. And I have my belt tool attached to that extension. So moving it this way towards the right of the vehicle will lessen the tension on the belt. And we should be able to remove it off of the alternator pulley. Again, on the end of the tensioner, it's just a square like this. It's an extension. And I was able to attach my belt tool to a shorter extension than this. And attach it to our tensioner. So we can actually move it. And that will loosen the tension on the belt uh, from the alternator. So we can go ahead and remove the belt. So by pulling the tensioner to the right of the vehicle, I was able to remove the belt from the alternator. So now we're ready to go ahead and unbolt the, the alternator from the block. There's one bolt up here on the alternator. And there's two more at the bottom. And of course we have electrical connection in the back we can remove that once we unbolt it now as far as the tensioner goes I have a extension wedged against this bracket here holding holding my belt tool here so it keeps the tensioner from swinging all the way back the reason I did that if I let it swing all the way back it's not a problem other than it hits the other hoses here and there's plastic ends on them. I just don't want to put too much stress on those and end up breaking those. So I'm just holding the tension here. It's not too bad. It'll be fine. It's wedged up against there. Once we get the new alternator in, it'll be easy to put the belt on. Now, I am not going to be replacing my belt. My belt only has about 10,000 miles on it. That's much more involved, so I'll, uh, I'll reuse the same belt. I was able to spin the tensioner. 
pulley and the idler pulley here by hand. There's no issues in those. It is my alternator that we know, so we'll go ahead and replace that. So on top of the alternator, there is a 13 millimeter bolt holding the alternator to the block. You can see my ratchet and sockets on it. We'll go ahead and remove that. So I have the 13 millimeter bolt out from the top of the alternator. Now we'll take a look at the underneath. Now underneath you can see two more 13 millimeter bolts at the bottom of the alternator. Those will also have to be removed. In this case a swivel and a long extension will help. For your electrical connection onto the alternator. It's going to be kind of hard to film but I'll show you. I have a wrench on here. If you can see this red piece that's the cover. That's the boot over the electrical connection on the alternator. That's your charge wire going to the battery. There is another electrical pl plug behind the alternator, but this is on the on the right side of the vehicle. It's another 13 millimeter nut. You can see my wrenches on it. So we need to go ahead and remove that and remove the wire from the alternator. With that charge wire removed from the side of the alternator, I was able to tilt it back or tilt it forward actually. And as you can see, there is a this plug here which attaches to the back of the alternator. My apologies, it is kind of hard to film in here, but the plug is attached right to the back of the alternator. And this red boot that you see is the wire that attaches to the side of the alternator. The 13 millimeter nut. Anyhow, at this point, our alternator is loose, all the connections are off. Now, we just have to fish that thing through here and out and in with the new. So let's see how that works out. I was able to squeeze the alternator right out of there. Here is our alternator. That's definitely bad. It's just about frozen, barely turns. Anyways, here's what I had to do to get that out. You definitely don't need to remove anything uh, as far as the electrical box, running wires, or anything out of that. There's plenty of room here, right through the headlight. Room here. Um, one thing I did end up doing is disconnecting the upper radiator hose up here from the thermostat housing or that whole piece thermostats actually on the other side uh, but anyhow you can definitely disconnect it here uh, but the whole thing was to pull it up disconnecting it here wouldn't have pulled it up this way so i ended up disconnecting it here <clears throat> undoing this clamp excuse me and pulling this whole thing up that was the only hose i disconnected um, obviously there was a little bit loss of coolant very minimal uh, so unfortunately we will have to bleed the system after we're done but that gave me enough room to squeeze the alternator right out of here so there's plenty of room one more thing I did do you can see that AC line that's right there there's a clip that holds it right under the frame there I undid that clip and that dropped the line below the frame just enough Otherwise, it was catching the alternator. Uh, so doing those two things, removing this coolant hose up top here, and just pulling this whole whole assembly up, and undoing that clip on the AC hose, that will drop it a little bit, just enough to get that alternator right out of there. Now, being that this is a supercharged, it has this assembly, so if you have a non-supercharged L322, you will not have that. Uh, so you won't uh, so that'll even be easier on that actually we have our replacement alternator This is a brand new unit not a reman now before you start putting it back into the vehicle You want to make sure all your morning mounting points are correct in correct positions your um, Cable connections and your plug in this case this one the new one I have here is, is, is identical you want to make sure the pulley is the same as what you took off um, so at this point we're ready to go ahead and put this back in it's really just going to go in the same way it came out right out of there we'll get that into position and get it bolted in we have the alternator in position here it is easier to make the electrical connection while you still have it kind of forward before you put it in position remember there's one battery wire on this side and that plug the battery wire you can get once it's bolted in but the plug is kind of hard to get to. It's just easy to plug it in before you push it into position. Now all I have to do is put the two bolts in at the bottom. The top one is just hand tight. 
Then we'll put the belt on and get rest of our stuff buttoned up. We have the alternator in, all the connections are made, the two bolts underneath are tight, the one up top is tight. We have the belt on, making sure the belt stays on all the pulleys correctly as it should all the way around. We've taken a look underneath, up top, the belt is where it should be. Uh, and remember the AC line, you loosened up that clip back there to lower it. Don't forget to put that back in. Now we're ready to go ahead and install our, install our bracket back in position that holds our water or coolant bottle yes I did clean and paint this it was kind of raggedy looking to begin with so we'll get that in position and bolt it up right where it goes and we'll button this up I have the bracket back in I have the coolant bottle back in all the connections are made our hose is back on the clamp is back on it remember this hose was off that's back on so all we got left to do is put the headlight in Put the air cleaner back in, the intake hose back on, connect the battery, and we should be able to test everything. Our coolant lines are on, intake air hose, air cleaner is on. Now at this point, I'd like to go ahead and test it. We'll run the vehicle and make sure our alternator is charging, make sure there's no leaks or anything like that before I put the engine cover back on or the, or the skid plate underneath back on. Make sure our headlight's working. Uh, so I want to go ahead and test all that. And then after that, we'll go ahead and put the engine cover back on, take it for a test drive, and then recheck everything, make sure there's no coolant leaks or anything like that. Now, at this point, there's one thing you do need to do once you run it. We need to bleed the air out of the cooling system. So we'll take it through its hot cycle, let it cool down, and, and, and cycle the, the cooling system. Here is a bleeder right on this. We'll leave that open as it's running. We'll bleed the air out of it, then top the coolant off. I have the vehicle running, headlights are on, all that is functional, and I have the voltmeter on the battery with it running. We're at four, almost 14 and a half volts, which is perfect. That means our alternator is charging, so that is successful. So at this point, we'll let the vehicle get warmed up, bleed the air out of the cooling system. We'll put the engine cover back on, button everything up, take it for a test drive, and make sure there's no leaks. So at this point, our alternator replacement is completed. If you have any questions, comments, please do let me know. I thank you for watching.